Good morning, everyone. You know the downside of the initial stages of cutting weight? I'm not quite big enough yet. So I'm in that like transitory period where <laughs> I'm flat and I'm fat. So I just like look in the mirror and I can tell I'm a bit leaner. My muscles are flat as fuck and there's a bunch of fat on top of it. So I just, it does not look good. <laughs> That's probably the one biggest downside, but I've been here before and I've been to 8% body fat before. I've never been stage ripped, never have, but I've been close enough to be like maybe, I would say five weeks out of stage ripped, which uh, it's hard to do that. And so you hold, I, I think it mostly has to do with um, the fat content, but also your skin sort of reacts to everything going on. So as you like dip down in weight, your skin still needs to adjust and tighten up around everything. Unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't quite do that as much as I would like it to with my stomach. I used to be a real fat kid. So I cut about 84 pounds when I initially started working out, doing a routine I could never replicate today. And that's me speaking here. <laughs> I, uh, I was in high school, so I would get off a of, get off of school and I go to the gym and I would do two hours of lifting and exactly two hours of cardio every single day. I did that for a whole year and I didn't I actually really tanked my metabolism too because while I was doing all this, I was immers uh, immersing myself with information and I didn't really quite understand how metabolic rates worked. So I was under the impression that uh, I only burnt calories through activity. So I would be eating like 1500 calories a day. And then I'd also be in the gym, especially on cardio equipment, trying to expend 1500 calories every single day, <laughs> which I always went in knowing that. So let's let's back up a second so calorie counters are i wouldn't even really call them ballpark the reason is because your body's constantly adjusting your body's adapting to what you're doing and your body's uh think about it as your body wanting to be lazy your body doesn't want to have to work extra hard just to survive so when you're eating less food and you're upping your activity level quite a bit what your body's doing is, I mean, it doesn't know that you're doing an exercise routine. It's just reacting to the changes that are happening because of the external factors you're throwing at it. So your body starts getting really efficient at being able to store things. So when that happens, your body actually could lower your metabolic rate, especially if you're, you're in a calorie deficit uh, for a prolonged amount of time. You know, if it takes you six months and let's say towards the end you really push low like i'm talking 1200 to 1500 calories at the end your body is going to have a very low basal metabolic rate and your body's going to be very good at not expending energy as great as it did in the beginning through activity so when you factor in calorie counters i wouldn't really call them a ballpark because your body's ever changing and it's really individualized to the point where just because you wear a watch and it tracks your heart rate that's not good enough but i will say there's a very useful way you could use these things that people don't think of and again this goes back to hard work so let's say you just let's say you're a lifestyle person which means you just want to get in better shape because you want to look better naked or you want to just feel overall healthier and lose some weight along the way. Completely fine, most people want to do that. Most people are not like me, they don't want to go compete and shit, they just want to look good. So, you're gonna have to track things. You're gonna have to eat in a calorie deficit. And you don't have to weigh out all your food like I do, if that's your prerogative. But what you will probably do, is you're gonna use a calorie counting metric of some sort, whether that be a phone app like my fitness pal or anything like that 
My favorite is actually the Carbon App by Dr. Lane Norton. So, I just turned around because there's a bunch of motorcycles over there and I don't want to completely fucking trash my video because I'm making a good point right now. <laughs> um, you use these things and there's some eyeball work done, but you're, you're plugging in the food you eat throughout the day and you have a calorie goal. Let's say you want to eat 1800 calories a day and you're trying to get more protein in, but you're not being super strict about how you get it. But what you are being strict about is your calories and you're doing that over time well you're tracking and that's very good and then with the activity like let's say you have an apple watch or a fitbit so even though i said the calorie counter is not accurate what it is doing is it's providing you with a lot of data and the data comes in the form of steps average heart rate exertion exercises completed and how look at how many calories it says you burn throughout that time so even though the actual uh, metric of calories burned is inaccurate, you now have a lot of data to go off of. So when you're eating that 1800 calories a day, you could start weighing yourself every week and see like, okay, well, because I'm eating this way and because I'm putting in this much activity every week, according to my watch, I'm losing two pounds a week. And then you could start to make those things standards but the point is you have to at least refine yourself down to having these variables in control so you can start playing with the data you know you can't you can't eat good monday through friday and on the weekend say fuck it now what you can do if you're again a lifestyle uh person you can go out on the weekend let's say you have two beers and you have one shitty meal with your friends you should be responsible. Try not to fucking binge or go overboard with that. But let's say that one day, say on all the other days you average 1800, that one day because of the shitty meal and the couple beers you're at 25, 2600 calories, it's not the end of the world. It's not gonna hamper the, uh, um, the uh, damn, what's the word, what's the word, what's the word? It's not gonna hamper the progress you're making and still you could track that as well you could be like okay on saturday night i'm gonna go out this is sort of what i'm gonna do and you're gonna you're gonna do that you're still gonna have the data in front of you You could say okay so given how i'm living my life every week with my diet and all that and the activity i'm putting in i'm able to look back and be like okay this is what i need to put in to lose two pounds every week and then if that starts tapering off then you get to play with the data. You could be like, okay, well, what if I dip the calories a hundred lower? Or instead of that, what if I turn my 20 minutes into cardio into 25 minutes of cardio? And then you do that. And because you already have a baseline data set to go off of, you're able to do that. And then the following week, you could say, okay, this reinstated the progress I was making, or this helped me lose more than before and the important part is you don't want to go super overboard with it right because like i said your body adapts to everything that's why when i'm coaching clients or i'm even being coached myself you don't want to throw someone in the gym even if they're more than willing to and make them do fucking 45 minutes an hour of cardio every day you don't want to do that because their body, you're, they're going to have a big drop initially, but then their body's going to get used to doing that every day. And once their body gets used to doing that every day, now all of a sudden it's going to, it's going to start lowering its expectations to lose fat off of your body. And it's going to become harder and harder and you're going to crash your metabolic rate faster. So you're going to bottom out a lot quicker. That's why when you progress it over time, I really like to do, start at like 15 minutes, add five, add five minutes every week or two weeks. I think two weeks is a good marker. The only reason you should add an extra five minutes after a week is if you are really on your shit and nothing fucking happened for you, which if you're newer or even if you're intermediate should never be the case if you're on your shit. So 
you start implementing all of those things, you really get a lot of stuff to play with there. And you start to know your body too. It becomes pretty fun too once you start getting accustomed to looking at all these numbers because you get you start setting you start setting better standards for yourself. Everything's more refined. You're more polished with your approach to everything and you have numbers in front of you to understand why A causes B. Very important. That was my little tidbit for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, this really helps my morning cardio, actually, just sharing thoughts like that. Um, because uh, as much shit as I talk, a lot of people don't really look at things uh, the way that I do towards losing weight, and they get overwhelmed. It's not hard to lose the weight. I would say the hardest part is the mental aspect. You know, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of the times where, especially on days off of work when I'm bored, I, I'm just laying around. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking about food a lot more often than I would be if I was doing busy work all day. And some people are smart enough to be, to realize that and they go find projects and shit to do in their free time. My hat's off to those people. You know, some people go out on the weekend, they're like, all right, I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna go build some shit or I'm gonna go on a hike. You know what? That's a really healthy approach. By distracting yourself with activity, you're really benefiting yourself with hitting these goals you want to. Now, the thing I really want people also to recognize is we're human. Most of us don't end up feeling completely satisfied with the way we look, but the few that are that's I mean that's a great that's a great quality you found it you found your cutoff point you found how you want to look and you know what you need to do to stay there but for most of us it's an ongoing process and that's really how the uh obsession of fitness comes into play because you set goals for yourself and then you actually hit them and you're like well don't exactly look how i expected to and i think i could do better and then you start reassessing your goals <laughs> and accelerating and improving them over time. And it turns into this like lifelong project where the body of work is your body itself. And maybe some look at that in a grim outlook, but it's actually fun. <laughs> it's fun for me. You know, I never look in the mirror. I'm like, oh yeah, I look perfect. Nope. Not even when I'm uh, completely ripped out of my mind. The first thing I see are things I need to work on and I'm actually happy to work on them because over the years I built the knowledge where like I know what I need to implement to improve things that I would like to. Like for instance, my legs. My legs have always been shitty and it's self-induced. So I've been lifting for a little bit when I was 14, but I definitely started a routine seriously when I was 15 years old so let's say thir okay so I'm 28 13 years so I really you know this was an ongoing process for me and when I played high school football I really fucked up my knee and I didn't rehab it right and on top of that um you know as a kid who really wants to show their worth I went and continued to play injured so I really did a number on my knee not learning proper squat mechanics and attempting to grit through it, I would always reach a pretty modest amount of weight. And then I would do something to tweak my knee over time. And I would be competing in MMA and boxing as well. So just training my legs hard, wanting to avoid tweaking my knee, I didn't prioritize legs as much as I prioritized the rest of my body. And years down the line, it shows because <laughs> My, my, even though I started training, actually working both things around the same time, the amount of attention I put into building my upper body was significantly more than my legs. And it shows that's not something to be discouraging because over time, especially actually squatting more, I've actually made my knees much healthier. And I know what exercises and how they need to be performed in a way to improve them and bring them up to match my upper body. 
so it's become a project and you have to couple that with being able to adjust your diet accordingly and really track it over time which muscle gain it can be hard to track you know because you're you're not going to stay completely ripped and lean all year round it's not going to happen if you actually want to build something so you're putting on a little bit of fat it's making it a lot more difficult to really see the, the tissue translation and actual muscle uh, tissue that you're you're putting on yourself so when you do all when, when you factor all that stuff in you know damn this german shepherd is pissed uh you know you factor all that stuff in come on guy i'm trying to make a video disrespectful dog yeah you, know, you factor all that stuff in well it comes a lot with trusting the process as well it, what, what i would do is i'd have very set parameters of what need to happen i need to con consistently increase the strength on the lifts that work my legs week in and week out in some manner didn't have to be i shouldn't have started i shouldn't have said wait um the the uh, the ability to work work them to exhaustion so whether that came in the form of adding five more pounds to a lift or adding a few more reps to a lift i had to at least improve one of those every week and after you've been doing this for a lot of years sometimes it doesn't shake out that way but the way it, it translates over time is you do have a somewhat steady incline in how the how things are trending that German Shepherd is still pissed and he's in the alley. Uh, so I'd be doing that and then eating an ass load of protein every day and tracking my weight every week and see that it's steadily going up. You could only assume at that point that based on everything going on with you, that you're adding some refinement, some detail, some size to the muscle you want to work along with everything else. So it just becomes something you work on over time. And I'll tell you right now, I'm about to do a, I'm gonna do a bodybuilding show in December. I do not think my legs match my upper body still. I don't think they do. But the amount of progress I managed to put on and, and make with them, 100% know that within a couple years, everything will be balanced exactly how I'd like it. So, I mean, and you gotta keep in mind, I've been doing this for 13 years and I did most of it naturally. So I actually know how to train and eat and the amount of sleep I need to get and everything to do naturally before we start throwing super supplements in the mix. And most people, people need to not skip, skip and jump the gun on this stuff because the same rules apply, they do. The exact same rules apply to someone on gear as they do naturally. What the gear is, is it's a catalyst. It's drastically enhance, enhancing the recovery the what and the the satellite cells and nuclei within your muscle tissue itself so it's giving you the potential to put on a lot fucking airplanes man I'm trying to make a point in this motherfucking airplane yeah it would be a southwest plane they always are I'm gonna start boycotting the shit out of them like they're fucking up my terrible YouTube channel. So, sorry, I keep transitioning things so a lot. Um, oh, there's a bee, I don't like that. There's a bee, everybody. So I did most of that naturally and the same rules apply. If you do steroids and you don't know what the fuck you're doing with your diet or your training, you will put on a little bit of progress because you're elevating your hormones uh, exponentially. But that's that progress is going to stagnate at an embarrassing rate. And you will not look how you think that other people look simply by taking steroids. Because all the same rules apply to you. You still have to eat a very disciplined diet. You still have to train and train to failure. You still have to get enough rest. It's just a catalyst that's speeding up the process for you. Everyone in this neighborhood's looking at me when I'm talking to my phone. I don't give a fuck. 
hope everyone has a good morning this is morning cardio talks with Jeff hopefully you learned something today if you didn't feel free to tell me to go fuck myself have a good day